Did you know tungsten, the metal they use for the electrode in a TIG torch, has the highest melting point of any other steel? Won't melt till like 3500 degrees C. It's fucking hot. Hey guys, so this is gonna be a little bit more of a talky talky video. So if you're not really into that, I'll put, I don't know, a link up here somewhere for a project video. And right off the bat, I wanna get two things out of the way. One, I am not a ticketed welder. Like, I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination. I do have some experience. I'm an industrial mechanic by trade, so I do have to do some welding, but anything what requires a lot of strength, like say steam pressure, something like that, like I don't touch any of that. And secondly, I really want to distinguish between a ticketed welder who welds out into the trade and a hobby welder because for a hobby welder, you're not really looking for a ton of strength for most things you're doing. I mean, if you're building like say that bench I just worked on yesterday, you could really put some bubble gum on that and it's not going to fall apart on you. Whereas a welder out in the trade really needs to watch what they're doing and make sure that there's no dirt in the weld and just make sure everything's perfect because there could be a lot of pressure behind what they're welding. So the reason why I make that point is as a beginner welder, it's really not that difficult to pick up, say, something like a TIG torch and figure out in an afternoon how to make some weld. But that being said, you will not be able to weld a high pressure steam line or something like that. That's where welding becomes difficult and the trade becomes a lot more involved and a lot more things to learn. All right guys, now with that stuff out of the way, uh, the main reason for this video is just to go over a few of the questions I got on the last video, which was making this welding cart. And the first one I'm gonna go over is why I went with the Square Wave 200 instead of the MiG-210. And for those of you who don't know, the MiG-210 has TIG, stick, and MiG. And then this here just has TIG and stick. So it's a really valid question. Why wouldn't you just get the one what can do all three? And there's a big difference. And that's because this guy here can do AC welding, which is needed for aluminum. And with that comes with an extra few features, what you need to get a good aluminum weld. So that's the reason why I went with the square wave. Oh, one other quick point I wanna make, cause I'm sure someone will bring it up in the comments section. Uh, you can get a spool gun for your MIG welder to weld aluminum. And all it is is it's, you get a whole new gun and it's got like a little spot for a spool of aluminum and you're essentially MIG welding aluminum, which is also a great option if, if that's what you're looking for is just, I prefer the TIG welding over MIG because you get that stacked dimes look so it's a lot cleaner looking weld and again that's why I went with the square wave. Another really important question I got, what paint did you use? This stuff. First time I ever used it, not a paid endorsement or anything but uh, pretty impressed. One coat seemed to cover really nice and now that it's really nice and dried hard it's actually quite smooth. So. Yeah, I'd recommend that stuff every day of the week. Yeah, so Ryan, you obviously recommend TIG welding because you got a ton of experience with it, but like, if I'm like a new welder, would you recommend MIG welder or TIG welder? So yeah, this was probably the most common question and it's a really good question. And it's also a really hard question to answer because it largely depends on what you want to do with it. Um, if you're gonna do work like, say like building like a utility trailer or say like what even I just did in my last project, that bench, uh, MIG welder's probably a way to go because for one, it is a lot easier to learn. Two, um, it handles dirty metal a lot easier. And uh, three, it's, it's probably faster. So for metal fabrication type stuff like that, uh, MIG is probably your answer. Now, TIG has some advantages over MIG though, what I like, and one and probably the most important is it makes a nicer looking weld and it comes with practice, but the more you practice, the better you'll get at it and you can make a really pretty looking weld and for stuff that we probably do, like say incorporating welding into furniture and things like that, a nice looking weld's pretty important. Um, two, there's a lot less spark, so worry of fire is less. I mean, you still gotta be cautious, but it's definitely less. 
And then three, another big one for me is the ability to weld aluminum. So those are the things I think of when I think of MIG versus TIG, but uh, someone who's more of an Abbott welder would probably have a bunch of other points to make as well. All right, Ryan, you talked me into it. I'm gonna go for the TIG welder. How steep is this learning curve? Okay, so it's actually not that bad. Now, remember the point I made before between like a ticketed welder versus a hobby welding? To actually get a weld going with a TIG torch is not that difficult. Uh, I'm just gonna go over the basic principle um, they're your filler material, so make you use the wire and it automatically spools out. This here, it uses, uh, this for filler material, which is basically the same thing, except instead of the MIG welder feeding it for you, you're going to feed it with your hand. And you got a torch, and it's got an electrode in there, which I talked about at the beginning, which is tungsten. You just sharpen that to a nice point, and it tight in there and you lock it in so the idea is to heat up the metal with the torch and then once it's hot enough you just dab this in there and to get that stack that uh, stack dimes lock all you got to do is you're gonna feed get your metal hot enough get your pool starting dab it in pull out move forward dab it in pull out move forward dab it in now it sounds really simple, but it does take some practice. But if you're spending an afternoon just on a piece of flat bar, you'll be surprised on how nice of weld you'll be able to get. So it's not that difficult. Like I said, it's a lot more difficult to be um, get that high strength, high penetration. But as far as you get a, look, a pretty looking weld, just a little bit of practice, you'll be there. Anyways, guys, I hope you like this. If you do, give me a big thumbs up. And I'm Ryan Nodwell. Thanks for watching.